and you talk about Rapzilla and your viewership, or you ready to go live now? I just pressed live right now as you were saying. <laughs> I can do it after. Uh, oh, hold on. This is Justin from Rapzilla. We are at the Mic Drop premiere, and look at all these these legends in Christian hip hop in front of us. Maybe, maybe let's start from you, and then we'll go. Everyone just introduce themselves real quick, and then we'll get into some questions. All right, I'm Alton Lee, the Son of Thunder from DOC. Mark Brown, property to me, DLC. I'm XL, I'm the guy playing guitar and bass on SFC, Diamond Twin, Freedom of Soul, and XL, we got the 40 songs. I'm Stephen Wiley, I'm just happy to be here, sidekick to Mike Peace. <laughs> I'm Mike Peace, I'm even happy to be here with sidekick Stephen Wiley. <laughs> I'm Team Rock God's Gangster from the Power Plant Radio Show. I'm Johnny J from uh, ET Network. Let's go back. King Solomon J, PID. H1MC, PID. Fred Lynch, PID, Bridges in the Sky. Noel, Dynamic Twins, how you doing? Robbie, Dynamic Twins. Where Bree, Cafe Republic, carries a torch from Mr. Solo and the Gospel Gangster. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kelvin Harvey, Peace Love and Aptalon, DOC. QP, Gabriel the founder, suit. That's that sick. Yeah, yeah. City baby from the gospel gangster. Yeah. 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 All right, so just just project a bit because you know we're going to the phone. Let let's uh first of all, when was when was the last time some of you guys have performed? Who hasn't performed, you think, in the longest? Who's been active? <laughs> That would be good to know, I guess, for everyone watching. Any, anyone, anyone could grab this one. O2. O2? Wow. 96. 96. So that we have the winner right now. Anyone before 96? <laughs> are you? Are anyone? Anyone performed recently? Oh, yes, uh, last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. Thursday night with the uh, the Oakland yeah. Department of Corrections Chaplains concert. Well, there you go. All right. You got that warm up there. All right. I think I think one of the one of the coolest things, and I've spoken to Stephen before, um, just talking about. You know, rap music in the church when you guys started. What are some of the the craziest stories when you know you showed up to rap at a church or tried to rap at a church and they were like, "No, no, we don't, we don't do that here. You guys got to get out." Or they kicked you out, or they they made you feel unwelcome. Anyone have a crazy story? I'm sure you all. I'm sure you all got a crazy story. All right, let's go. Super. All right, let's go. I'm pushing fully armed, which is out of trouble. Right. I go to this path through. In, I lived in Pomona. Went up there, showed him uh, he was a youth pastor. Showed him my cassette, told him, yo, I want to get out for the youth. Tell him what a cassette he was like, what a cassette. <laughs> What's that? My man was like, you know, I don't really respect this. I'm, we, don't, we don't do this at our church. So I walked away, left. Four months later, met this dude in a park. And he, and he said, yo, man, you stay in the neighborhood. We're over around here. You should come to our church. And I came to the church, and they had a rap group there. That's where I met this dude. <laughs> and it was the same pastor that said no. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was you. I don't know. Pastor, oh, pastor yeah. Diego. Pastor Diego. So that's my crazy oh, story. Yeah. <laughs> I got hey. another one. We, uh, we were on the road, and it just kind of a testament to, you know, what we were doing for the Lord. But we went to one church, and I don't know what happened. You know, I'm diabetic and stuff, so I need to eat, and, you know, insulin, blood sugar. You know. <laughs> and the dude, when we got there, he said, look, we don't have enough money to feed you guys. We're not going to be able to give you nothing to eat. So then, <clears throat> okay, we're here to do the Lord's work. That's what we do. So we get up on the stage, we do our thing, and they see all their youth people identifying with what we're doing. Okay, and then Soup did an altar call. And then 
ton of the youth came up and received the Lord. So then we just felt after that, okay, the work was done and everything. Then he comes up, oh, oh, hey, we, we were able to conjure up some more money. We can get you guys something to eat <laughs> after they see the Lord pull. It was, it was, it was the loaves and the fishes. Work me worthy of his hire, right? So here's here's a question. Some people say Michael Peace is the first. Some people say Stephen Wiley is the first. So you're both right next to each other. So <laughs> who did it first? For the record, so everybody knows. Before I even stepped into the Christian music industry, I was listening to Bible Break by Stephen Wyatt. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there's the record. There's the record. Now, what about Pete McSweet? I know he had that that song. Where? What's? Anyone know what he's doing? No, he called me. Um, somehow he got my number. We talked at this point. It was about ten years ago that we last talked, and he sent me, you know, the the, the you know the, the vinyl of, of his of his stuff. I, I don't know. Sometimes it, it's unfortunate that sometimes in, in, when it comes to industry things, both mm-hmm. secular and otherwise, whoever is heard the first mm-hmm. is treated as the first. Right. I, I had not ever heard of the Sugar Hill Gang, but I heard of Enfrica Bambada. Mm-hmm. I heard of the Cold Crush right. Crew. Mm-hmm. I heard of Grandmaster Fashion Fears 5 MCs, mm-hmm. you know, when I would go up to Harlem and yeah, South Bronx and stuff like that. Yeah. So I heard all of them before, I ever, I didn't, before anything was ever put on vinyl. And so I think in the case of, of, of Mc, you know, Mc, McSweet, um, I think that he was the first in terms of, okay, he did it, but no one had really heard of him. And to, that's right. why, you know, I guess he was the first on, on vinyl. Yeah. But then if I go backwards, you can look, you can look at what was uh, Godspell, the, the, the play Godspell. Mm-hmm. There is a scene that Gospel, remember Gospel came out in late 60s, early 70s right. on Broadway. They, they were rapping on in Gospel. There's a scene in, of rap in Gospel, wow. legitimate rap in Gospel. So um, the first and all that other kind of stuff, I just want to say for the record, you're looking at him. This is him. That's the one right here. Well, right let's, here. Let's, and let's no disrespect. No disrespect to Mick Sweet, because that's a good brother. We had a great conversation and great time. You know, but in terms of documenting for what we are as a genre, yeah. not as an individual, but as a genre, right. it's Stephen Wiley. Stephen Wiley. Yes. Well, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But let me throw another name in. You know, it, it is, you know, you talk about the, the documentation. I may have had the first national distributed rap song, but there's a guy, here's the name, Frankie Hooker. I don't know if anybody ever heard of Frankie it's Hooker. Yeah. Yeah. Frankie Hooker had a song. Two years before I did, it was locally distributed in the Washington, D.C. area. Hmm. And I met him and talked with him, and we looked at comparing dates. His recording was actually released two years before mine came out in the early 80s. So Frankie Hooker, I want to give him some props and put his name out there because he was an inspiration to me. Wow. All right, well, we got, we got a couple of groups here, too. So who was the actual first Christian hip-hop group? Do we know that? D.I.D. D.I.D. I'm going to say J.C. is the boy. Oh, no. J.C. is the boy. Oh, no. J.C. is the boy. Oh, no. J.C. So you got to tell them that story, man. You got to tell them J.C. is the boy. Because y'all started out. Yeah, that's how I met. The twins. The twins. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, J.C. and the boys. J.C. Goose. Bro, it's all. Hey, Goose. Yeah, he was the one. And, um, because, you know, I... That's about the time I got saved. He worked at a radio station, and uh, I tried. I was calling him because he kept mentioning God on a radio station. So I called him up and said, "Yo, man, I keep hearing you talking about God in between all this hip hop. You know, I'm, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm doing. I, I wasn't even calling the gospel rap. I said I'm doing conscious rap. <laughs> is what I said at the time. You know, I'm talking about God and my stuff. He said, "Oh yeah, give me a number." Exchange numbers, and the dude after the show came to my house. And that night, I I, uh, I cut a four track with him. And nice. from there on, there it is. There it is. He started beating that. They put us all together. Yep. So you got the twins, got the twins, got me, got MC Peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who else came out of that? Uh, Poetic Lee. Poetic Lee. Poetic Lee. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And that was right around like '88. 
87. That's when you came out, 87. So, 86, because I remember seeing uh, JC and the boys, y'all had that pose with, with the high five, yeah, right. and you had that cool hat. Yeah. That, that cool hat. <laughs> right. I was like, how is that cool hat? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was right when y'all, I saw y'all's picture, your promo, and didn't even hear your stuff, but that was at the same time our stuff, we would start trying to push our stuff out, and uh, trying to push stuff out from the South. You know, folks was like, you know, we like what you do. And I had, I literally had a, a record executive say, I love what you're doing, but there is no way I can market it. Because, because people are going to be too scared. Mm -hmm. The moment that you try to put something out that says rap mm -hmm. and that you're a Christian, Christians are going to be too scared. You're going to be too worldly for the church, too churchy for the world. So I don't know what to do for you. And to piggyback off of that, Everybody telling us on the West Coast, yo, man, ain't nobody doing this. Ain't nobody doing this, man. We go, come out here to do a gig, and it's with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hit it, yeah. man. We it just, like, yo, y'all right yeah. doing this too? Yeah. <laughs> so see, from all these groups, like y'all said, groups for us, yeah. gospel gangsters, he put us on. Yeah. That's yeah. right. He yeah. was the first one to put us on any kind of video, TV, First one put us on, I started big up to Soup, man. He got yeah. he, If it wasn't for Soup, it wouldn't be no gospel gangster for real. Because yeah. nobody didn't like know us. When we popped up on the scene, everybody had records already. Everybody was already moving. We was, you know, plus we was a little rough around the edges. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so when we come up to the shows, you know, everybody got this believer etiquette that we don't have. You know what I mean? So we used to sit back and watch all the groups and say, okay, we can't say that right there. You <laughs> 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 talk to the pastor, you better say this. You better say this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right now. You know what I mean? So we were a little rough on the edges, but from all the groups we learned, we learned, we sit back and we learned, we learned. Because we didn't have a record, we didn't have a cassette. Everybody had records except us. But to be under all the tutelage, tutelage, Oh, how do you say that? <laughs> uh, it was a good thing because they was already rocking, they was already rolling. Yeah. So, you know, it was our history, and that's why I tell all the youngsters that's doing gospel hip hop right now, you got to know your history, man. Yes, this is all you your history. This is my history right here. History right here. You feel wow. me? Like, I look at myself like I'm the gospel gangsters, like the youngest out of the crew, of everybody. So, you know, all these is my mentors, man. This is what we looked up to. This is what we would. We would listen to them. I would call him sometimes like, bro, I'm banging you right now. Don't <laughs> <laughs> get to church, homie. <laughs> 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 and, and, and we was, we felt like we were real rappers. And he was a real rapper to us. Like he had to, you know, Sue got word. You got, you got, you got, you got word, bro. Word, so 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 all of that for us, man, it helped us grow in the genre, it helped the genre grow. You know, and a lot of people. We see they be like, oh, God, I'm gangster, man. I was the first hurt. Nah, bro. I, we, we might have crashed the board, but bro, they had the board already hanging, putting mm -hmm. stars on it. We, yes. just, we just showed up like the father told us to show up. Mm -hmm. We showed out. That's all it was. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, this is the backbone history of gospel hip hop right here. Right. Anybody that's doing this right now, anybody. Right. Yeah, real talk. So I know, I know in the in the very beginning, like the Dove Awards and all these different awards, there was no category for you guys. So, what was it like, kind of going to those to those meetings, and you're all there, and you're you're being nominated for like rock rock awards or or you know whatever whatever they're doing, and then what were those conversations like when you guys were actually all together? You know, I think you had told me. You, you would treat it like a rap summit. It was like, all right, everybody, everybody get together well, yeah, and yeah. let's, let's talk about time, this. You know, we, when they first started acknowledging rap music as a category, when we get together at the GMA, I remember ETW would be there and, and different ones, and, and we get together. It's like we had our own, it's like iron sharpening iron. Yeah. We have to yeah. encourage each other because yeah. nobody else was really, you know, they, they didn't accept the rap category. They thought it was just going to pass in trend. They didn't respect the element of God's word that was coming forth. But thank God for those, strangely enough, Bill Gaither. Bill Gaither saw the possibility of Christian rap music. 
I mean, here's the Southern Gospel guy, you know. Yeah. But uh, I remember myself, uh, Mike Peace, who was uh, DOC, DOC, we all ended up on the same record label. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we began to bring other people in. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember uh, Lee Wilson, yeah. Christian oh, yeah. comedian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're all Lee met Wilson in the mix. And, uh, and we saw the, the growth of it. I go to the Christian uh, bookstore and you see the DC Talk, PID, DOC, Mike Peace. Oh, about four or five. Now you go, you got a whole category in the Christian bookstore, Christian rap music. But got a website. Was that? We got a website. We got a website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in the beginning, it, it, what does the word say? Somebody planted the seed, somebody watched the seed, but God gave the increase. Just to add to it, you know what was fun was those hallway meetings. You just mm -hmm. said it a minute ago. We would see each other in the hallway, <laughs> and it'd be like, yeah. you know, and then we yeah. just go. We'd start a cipher, yeah. and yeah. people would start gathering around us that were part of the industry because, you know, it being hip hop and by nature, we kind of already start passing the information that we know you're not going to get no respect from nobody out here, but we can know how to give love to each other. Yeah. So we'd start doing cyphers and all of that and just blow it up wherever we would or could, and uh, that's what started pulling it on. One of my funniest stories I, I'll never forget, we were doing a cypher, Okay, we was rhyming, and it was some new kid. We don't know who he was, and I would just go chill and white. Okay, so we <laughs> rhyming, and he gets in, and everybody's getting their time. So we all sharpening. You know, we're giving our best verse, because it's like your time to drop, right? So we cypher. Some kid got up, and he was kind of like a little reggae or slash reggae slash hip hop. So he starts this thing, he's like, he starts a chant. <laughs> and the chant was, I'm that nigga that they can't forget to. <laughs> <laughs> and we all was like, <laughs> No, man. No, no, no. No. We work too hard. Tell him what, tell him what. Needless to say, he was that Negro we've all forgotten. Until, until this moment. Now, now you made him famous. <laughs> Are you, you guys trying to do a cipher today? I'd like to say this that um, I, I, this is this is everything that they have said is really significant. I just wanted to the some of the heart of because of uh, the question that you had asked, some of the heart of what we were feeling and experiencing during those days. Um, we would when they even when they even when uh, rap was sort of being received, um, we were not we were not being nominated yeah. for rap. They were giving the awards to people who were not rappers, right. but they mm -hmm. rap act on one song or had a rapper on their song, right. Right. and that would be the, that, and that would get the award for the best rap song. And we're like, you know, what are we like? You know, chitlins, you know, like we would, you know, and but but we just understood that. We just understood that um, what really mattered, and, and you, you could tell from everybody that's speaking, all we really did really care about was not about winning awards, but about winning souls. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and that really mattered. And, 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 yeah. you know, and that's not, and like I said, it's not disrespect or dishonor to anyone, you know, who, who were receiving those awards. And it, like I said, we didn't, we just, we were like, but we are really doing this. We are yes. really in the streets. We are really in the prisons. We were really with the gangbangers, you know, and you know, and this this genre was influencing and impacting them, and so um, we're just glad that it has come to the point where, you know, it's it's received as a as a legitimate genre and yes. legitimate people are getting legitimate accolades for it. Well, yeah. it's time to make that change. People all over. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. See, I was trying to go no there. Shame. I just All right, well. I remember back in the day when we used to go to the awards and we'll get nominated for a Grammy or whatever. And like you said, rock and roll, they wouldn't put us in a real rap category, but I guess they and we used to say be like, I guess we that hot, huh? We gotta we gotta go over to the rock and roll, you know. You guys are rock stars. <laughs> I'm gonna be a rock star so good. You know what I'm saying? But to say that we used to go to the award shows and then DC Talk told me them would be like, they'll get the award and they'll be like, hey, I keep telling these people 
why do they keep giving us awards? Y'all yeah. the rappers, we're not rappers. Why? So it's crazy, like you say that, some about us breaking through the genre and breaking mm -hmm. hip hop through that genre because even you got dudes like them say, we not real rappers, we might do something, but we're not, why do you got, and year after year they would win, and year after year they would tell them like, Stop giving us this. Yeah, Give it to somebody else. Like yeah, because you, yeah, you feel me? Like we sick of getting these things. Like don't give us no more. Give it to the real rappers. And I used to think it like, how come they don't never listen to y'all? It's been four years. They still ain't listening to y'all. So you know. I think uh, I was nominated for the first Dove Award, uh, hip hop artist, I guess you could say, and I lost the car. <laughs> All right, wait, hold on. All right, so I'm I'm glad I'm glad I was actually gonna ask I was gonna ask my next question yeah. was what was it like seeing DC Talk and Carmen make hip hop popular for for Christians? So I know that's it's a bit controversial, but first, but like but yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, like I said, uh, I started getting vocal on it and magazines and everything. And uh, I was actually at the Cornerstone Festival, 60,000 people. And we're opening up for DC Talk. <laughs> and uh, my man, my man comes to me and he says, so, man, you know, come talk to me. I go into it. First off, his, uh, his tour of us looked better than my crib. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> My man says to me the same thing he said. He says, man, I didn't ask for this, but they giving it to me. Says, but exactly what it is. We know, we know what it is. Yeah. Uh, to me, that, and I, I, I had a lot of respect for him, but he didn't have to do none of that. Right. Right. He, he was on top. Right. He didn't have to tell me nothing. Right. And when he did tell me that, it kind of chilled me out, mm -hmm. humbled me. And, but then it, and then it also opened the doors for the next yeah. generation to come. Yeah, I was, uh, I was sitting with a record exec from Nashville, and we were sitting up kicking it, we were chopping it up, and I started laughing, and we were talking and laughing, and he stopped in the middle of my laugh, and he said, you know what? That's the reason why y'all didn't sell as many albums he wanted to sell. And I was like, what you talking about? He said, that smile you got. He said, you have a great smile. Why didn't you smile in your albums? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I said, well, see, the, the era of hip hop, you were perceived as a threat, as a black man who refused to smile. You mm -hmm. would feel me. That was you understand what I mean? Now, of course, it may not have been the only reason, but it, but it was a big, big reason behind it. It was a big reason behind it. Hey, you refused to smile because it's not, you're not going to go along to get along, was perceived as a threat. And so those that did come out and smile and just say, hey, I'll go along, get along, and it seemed a little bit more, hey, we can work with y'all. Y'all not going to be a friend. You're not going to say anything that's out, out of line. You're going to be cool people. We're going to be cool. Hey, let's promote these folks. It's a little bit easier to work with these folks than it is with these folks. And I think that was kind of part of what was going on. Yeah, if I could, if I could interject also, you know, I was kind of joking about what happened with our series. Because the, uh, <laughs> I was in the same category with the Winans, and you know uh, they won the, the, the rap category mm -hmm. at this time. Yeah. But talking with them later, because I recorded my last album at the in their studio, and talking with them, they said, "Man, that wasn't right. You were the rap guy. We just had a rapper on our thing, and they got the rap category." So I thought, "Oh, let me just flip the script." So actually, I started rapping on other people's albums. I'm rapping on Helen Baylor. I'm rapping on different ones. But it, it's, it's once again, God is still getting the credit. He's still getting the glory. He's still getting the praise. I was watching just last night uh, the 80s. I don't know if y'all saw National Geographic channel. They had the 80s, and they were talking about Run DMC, how they crossed over with Errol Smith and walked this way, and they gave them a whole different audience. And what we did with uh, with Star Song Records, we started come a crossover appeal. Mm -hmm. We started a thing with Mike Lefebvre. We had a whole tour called Rap, Rock, and Roll. Yeah. So now we're reaching audiences that we normally wouldn't reach in our circle, as it were. We're crossing over to the rock audience. So now those that came to hear Mylon and Broken Heart are now listening to rap music, which once again, the word of God is getting out. You know, 
What's the scriptures talk about? Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. Mm-hmm. Well, you need different baits to catch different fish. That's right. In yeah. Oklahoma, we like catfish, and we have Oklahoma, uh, 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 we have Wheaties dough balls. I don't know if y'all know what fish you know about Wheaties dough balls. Yeah, with the uh, strawberry uh, soap. Come on, with yeah. the strawberries. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, and my father catches catfish by the number three wash tub full. But if he was going fishing for Barracuda, he couldn't use the Wheaties dough balls. So we need different bait to catch different fish, whether it's rap, rock, or rap, rock, or rap, rap, whatever. God gets the increase. So, you know, we laugh about different things. We talk about all of our challenges that we've had. But look at where we are now. Look what God has done. Look how, you know, we're, we're, this is a documentary that's going to reach the world, telling the story. You know, I was sharing earlier on the interview that, we have, God has given us an awesome position to reach our generation. Mm-hmm. Solomon reached his generation past, he got the baton that was passed from his father, David. And he passed the baton. We're speaking to our generation, but this video is going to pass the baton to the next generation right. and build on it and the next and the next. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I was going to say, how you doing, John? Hey, you know what? I'm backing up. We were talking about Toby and all that. Toby was our label mate. Yeah. And for, 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 for the most part, when we first started going to Double Wars, we started going in like 1990. And they did not have a category for that, you know, the rap thing. I really believe um, groups like DC Talk or whatever, they were making so much noise. They basically created a category for us. Yes, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to say whether he was you know, rapping up or whatever, because Toby was always humble and saying, yeah, even was. when we went head to head with them, man, you guys were the rappers, you should have got this, you know what I'm saying? I mean, every year it was the same thing. DC talk, okay. Yeah, DC talk, okay. <laughs> DC talk, okay. You know, so I mean, it could be a little discouraging, but at the same time, the platform was being expanded. Mm-hmm. So, you know, good or bad, right or wrong, I do give DC talk a lot of credit yeah. for expanding the platform sure, and making yeah. people aware. You know what I'm saying? That people, that, you know what I'm saying? So it did definitely expand the platform. You know what I mean? We are benefiting from some of the things. Because we all kind of started around the same time. Right. We started in 89, 90. You know what I'm saying? And even going back to the marketing thing. They didn't want people smiling a lot of times because it was a marketing thing. I mean, our first two albums, okay, we took a lot of mad pictures, but why are you picking the smiling one? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the album, like, wait a minute, what's this? You know, we didn't pick this, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, production. Um, we didn't do, well, why y'all, you know, okay, you know. I think the record companies were trying to be safe. safe. I'm talking about with, with Forefront. They were trying to be safe. I, mean, I can always speak for it. They were trying to be safe because we were, yeah, DC Talk over here, we had us. We were kind of like, you know, whatever. So the point was they were trying to push records and push, push the platform out. We didn't necessarily like the production of our first two albums to the point where when we actually did live concerts, we remixed all the music. Mm-hmm. We got a DJ, mm-hmm. we had all this other stuff going, because we, we couldn't really throw it out there on the street, you know what I'm saying? And I uh, said, so, okay, we, we go into places, man, where they're just not going to get it like that, you know, so we had to kind of toughen it up. So we, it wasn't too, really to our third album until we really got to where we really had more control of our production. You know what I mean? And no smile and stuff. We, right. <laughs> so we stopped. But the point is, is that they were trying to push the push the product out. And you know, and once you got the product out, then you can get in front of the kids and do whatever you want. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You know, so we, we didn't take that part as serious as we know that okay, we're gonna get this record's gonna go places that we'll never go. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But the point is that the message yeah. is getting out there. Yes. That's the thing. So my my final question is about, you know, the people who aren't here. We lost Mr. Solo. Um, I spent a lot of time the last two days with MC Gigi, mm-hmm. and she showed me where she showed me D Boy's gravesite and mm-hmm. where he got shot, wow. and and all of that. So, you know, what about some of the? Are there any others who aren't here, or Mike what? Hill. Mike, Mike Hill. Hill. Mike Hill. Mike Hill. This is all. This is all. This is. This came together to me because of Mike. That's right. So, what about anyone else? Kind of words on on the. The guys who aren't here anymore, and, and what you remember. I'm well, talking about Mike. Mike, I've adopted his philosophy. I, I live this. He'd always say, if you knew him, he said, "Son, brother, don't just talk about it. Be about it." That was his philosophy, and I've adopted it. Just don't talk about it. Be about it. Get it done. Yes. Chill, you're sick. Oh man, I gotta say, RH to my boy, because this game right here for me, he. 
you know what I'm saying? He came and got me on the block. You know what I'm saying? I was gang banging, putting guns in their mouths, man. You know what I'm saying? He he'd pull up on my block, bro, and minister to me. Yeah. Drop me off and say, you want to go to church with me right now? I said, nah, man, you know, I got this meaning in my hand, man. I'm not going nowhere. That's for you. And then, you know, the father, he put me in a place where I had to call on him. You know what I mean? And that's how that's how I came to know the father through Solomon. So, like, gospel gangsters and none of that. He was the leader of the group and all that. That's the homie I mentioned. He, he a real goat. Yes, You're talking yes, about, yes, like, yes, you yes, know, yes, people yes, say yes, the goat. Yes, that dude's a real goat. I mean, and, like, his work ethic is was so phenomenal. Like, this dude, like a lot of people don't know, we write, it's three people in a group. This dude write a song to every song. So he would write three verses to every song he did. And we would write one or two, he would write three. So he had books and books, this thick, just music, music. Do it in one Do it in one <laughs> take. And he'll drop in one take, bro. Like a real goat, like, you know what I'm saying? People used to be like, how come you guys don't never have writer's block? Because, bro, I got too much to say. So it was harder to put stuff on paper because we had so much to say. So we would write so many, so many verses to songs, you know, and, and the Father would just bless us like that. And I would tell people, like, look who I got to keep up with. That's how come I don't got right now. You know, you got to keep up with this dude right here. You know, by the time you on your big board, he done, he done wrote a verse and a half. You're like, wow. Feel me? So I want to respect him, man. Yeah. He a real goat. Man. Peace so, 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 so rest in peace on rest of R.I.H., bro. Rest in him. You feel me? All right. He a real goat, man. Yeah. So in this game, he, he's, he's, he's really missed by this game, man. By, by people in this genre, people in this game, man. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. a true dude, a real dude. Like a real dude. Real humble dude. You know what I mean? Real, real humble dude. Mm -hmm. Even though he was a gangster, bro, he was a real humble dude. You know? yeah, yeah. Chili, don't forget me to be very humble. CMC. Yeah, and then we buried the homie from CMC, you know what I'm saying? The homie from CMC, we buried him, you know what I'm saying? They was real dudes too. They was really doing, you know, uh, ministry in the streets, you know, when we met them. They, we, we, when we first went over to Gus and them house, he was like, you don't want to come over here really, do you? And I was like, yeah, homie, what's up? He's like, ain't nothing but bloods over here, homie. I know y'all all crips, you know? We all ain't nothing but bloods around here. We like, we on our way. He like, no, that's gospel. So we, we will go over their house, man. So CMC's, much respect for CMC's, man. We help write their album, me and Solo. That's like a blessing for us, you know what I mean? To be able to work with somebody and show them how this game go, and train them and teach them how it go, man. And the album came out great, bro. So much love to the homies from CMC's, rest in peace. All right, don't, unfortunately, guys, that's, that's all I got, but, you know, I can speak to some of you guys individually and we could do a little more, but this was great. The Rapzilla audience already loving it. Um, guys, it was a privilege and an honor to have all of you together in one shot, in one group. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.